I get a lot of questions about the garden, especially this time of year, and I love it. I love helping people. I thought it'd be fun to make a video taking some of those common questions that people ask, going through the garden and answering those. Let's dive in. One of the most common things I hear from gardeners is, oh, I didn't get a chance to plant that, or I wish I would have planted that. And my answer to that question and that comment is always, you still have time. Just because you didn't plant on Mother's Day weekend does not mean you cannot grow a garden this year. Please put a seed in the ground. It's better than no seed at all. We are in zone 7B and our first frost date is towards usually the middle of October. So then I just calculate the days. We have like roughly 100 days in our growing season left. We're entering into July. If I put bush beans into the ground, which I did just this week, they will be ready to harvest within 55 to 65 days. The same for cucumbers. If you put a seed in the ground right now, between like 55 and 75 days, you'll be eating a cucumber. So you still have time. We'll use this bed as an example over here. We harvested 69 heads of garlic. If you wanna see that, you can check out that video. And right after we harvested all the garlic, I went ahead and amended this bed and planted some dragon tongue bush beans. These will be ready to harvest when my first round of green beans, which is over here and thriving, is finished, I'll harvest those. And then just this week, we're at the end of June, I planted another round of bush beans. The great thing about planting later in the season is the ground is super warm. So when you put a seed in the ground, it'll germinate very quickly. I just put these seeds in the ground a few days ago and they are already sprouting. I'm sure all of you that are watching this video have your own handful of questions. I would love to answer them. We read every comment and we try to respond to every single one. So if you have a question, leave it in the comments below and we will get back to you. A question I often get about tomatoes this time of year is, why are my tomato leaves turning yellow? And to answer that, a yellow leaf on a tomato is usually a sign of blight. It's pretty common uh, with tomatoes, especially if you live in a hot and humid place. Let me show you what blight looks like first. So if we go down here on, usually it starts to form on the bottom leaves and you can see right here, there's kind of a yellowing, that leaf is starting to die. Here would be one that's just starting the process, some yellowing of the corners and the leaves there. And then over here on my interdeterminate tomatoes, you can see that the tips are turning yellow like that. Sometimes there'll be little circles. And what blight will do is if it is left untreated, it will spread. They're spores, and so they can spread by bugs coming in contact with that with your hands, pruners. So be sure to wash your hands, wash your pruners when you're dealing with blight. But what I do to control blight in my garden is one, I will trim off those infected leaves, and then I mix up a solution of eight tablespoons of peroxide mixed with a gallon of water. And I spray that on my tomatoes once a week all throughout the summer. Doing this has been like a game changer for my tomatoes. My tomatoes are healthy and thriving in the midst of that hot and humid weather in August, and I still get really beautiful tomatoes. If it's left untreated, it'll eventually spread, it'll kill your plant, it can also disease your fruit and be spotted on your fruit. So it is good to do something about it if you want a good harvest. This would probably be a good time to mention that we have a free ebook resource, completely free to you. It's some of my favorite tips and tricks about planting the summer garden, um, what you can plant, and then just some old fashioned tips that you probably already have in your pantry that you can put in your garden and your garden will grow. We'll leave a link in the description below. Be sure to check it out and remember it's free. So, utilize that. A question that was asked on our YouTube channel was why are my plants not growing? And there can be a couple different factors to that. One, it can be that the soil just needs to be amended. Usually adding some kind of compost to that plant, like around the area, will boost its growth. I also personally like to add a pro... No. I personally like to add a pre... pre I can't say that word. Probi no, probiotic. What's the prebiotic? Probiotic. Probiotic. I can't think of it now. 
I think it's a pre prebiotic. <laughs> prebiotic. I personally like to add a prebiotic. Nailed it! To the soil if I'm noticing some stunted growth. Overall, I do it to everything in the garden. Um, I use a product called AgriGrow. It's called Ultra. We can be sure to link it below, but it's affordable for as far as it stretches. You just mix it into some water, pour some at the base of the soil, and I have seen a great result from using that product in the garden. Um, another thing could be the temperatures. Sometimes if you plant peppers too early before the nights are above 50, it can overall stunt their growth and they'll eventually catch up, but they may just be slow in growing. But the number one cause for things growing slowly or if they're stunted is usually just they need some nutrients. So put some compost on there, use what you have, coffee grounds, eggshells. Um, one of my tips and tricks that I swear by is also soaking eggshells in some hot water overnight and then I water my plants with that eggshell water which gives them a calcium boost and calcium helps plants pull nutrients from the soil to feed the plant. So try that one and see how it goes. One of the questions I get asked a lot is how do I get my kids involved? How do I get them excited about the garden? My kids have been in the garden with me since they've been wee little. Like I would put a pack and play next to the garden and garden with them like that. <laughs> so they know nothing different. But there are some things that I have done over the years to continue to keep them engaged and to create wonder and excitement about being in the garden. One of those things is to plant things that they love, that they'll come down and they'll snack on, that creates like wonder and curiosity in them. One of those is a ground cherry. This one's not ready, but when they fall to the ground, they're all brown, there's this papery husk on them, and you pull this open, and then there's this beautiful golden ground cherry in the middle that has like a pineapple tomato flavor. And my kids love these. I think it's more the wonder of unwrapping it, and even as an adult, it's exciting. <laughs> Another one is lunchbox peppers. They're tiny little peppers. Rachel mentioned it in one of her first garden tours ever, and she's like, they get this big. <laughs> And my kids love those. They love to come down and snack on those. Another way is to create, like, give them purpose in the garden. Um, when we notice that things aren't getting pollinated, like a cucumber all of a sudden stopped maturing and it falls off, that's usually a sign that it's not been pollinated. But my kids will come down with paintbrushes and they'll go flower to flower and it gives them purpose. They're doing a job that I need to get done, but they're also having fun. So make the work fun for them, give them rewards. Um, Rachel's getting a little older, so she enjoys the rewards part of it. And she's super helpful in the garden. <laughs> If we need to harvest all the green beans, I'll be like, help me harvest this whole row of green beans and then we'll have a popsicle or what, you know, whatever you wanna do. But give rewards, create excitement, create some curiosity in the garden and don't be afraid to just bring them along on the journey. One of my favorite questions is, what are your favorite things to grow in the garden? I have things planted in my garden that are recommendations from other gardeners. So let me show you my top three. The action. One of my favorite. <laughs> Right. I'm not an actor, okay? okay? It's not a food item, but it is one of my favorite things because it brings joy. Zinnias bring me so much joy, and they're also really great for bringing pollinators to the garden. So if you're lacking bees in your garden, plant some zinnias. Also, the fun thing about zinnias is the more you cut them, the more they grow. So you have fresh flowers in your house all summer long, which is a really cool added bonus. <laughs> Number two is bush beans. I love growing bush beans, mostly because it's a really fond memory of my childhood. My grandma always grew bush beans and the memory of her handing them to me through my car window on the way home from school is still one of my favorite memories. I would come to her house after school and my grandma was Amish and so she was always in the garden, always growing things. And I would pull up and she would see me coming, but she would hand me a bag, a Ziploc baggie full of green beans in the car and I would drive home country roads eating these fresh green beans. So I grow them out of nostalgia, but our family also really likes them. Bush beans produce all, most of all of their fruit in like a two to three week span. So it makes it really nice for freezing. I grow 100 plants for us to fresh eat all summer long. There's four of us and then to freeze and I'll have them until next season. So bush beans are a favorite and also a very fun snack in the garden because there's just nothing like 
a fresh green bean. And if you pick them young, they're so tender. So delicious, <laughs> so good. We really like tomatoes. We eat them fresh all summer long. Some basil, some mozzarella cheese, a little bit of brown sugar and some balsamic vinegar. <laughs> I get excited just talking. Is your mouth watering? Yes. <laughs> it, really, it really is. Okay. I grow a wide range of tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes, big beefsteak tomatoes, canning tomatoes, romos, all the things. But they're just super cool. And they're slowly changing colors. This one's not even quite ready yet, but if I don't get them, the kids do at this point. But we will be swimming in tomatoes soon. I know I said top three things I like to grow, but there's so many. And I have to mention okra, so it's really number four. But okra was a new one to us because we're originally from Pennsylvania, so we're not from the south. But I wanted to try it. And we have been pleasantly surprised at how much we love okra. We eat it raw with some ranch. I deep fry it with some cornmeal and I freeze it, it freezes great. And we have a lot planted here this year, but if you are gardening in the South, grow okra. It will do so well. You'll legit have trees in your garden and you'll be harvesting probably morning and evening most of the time. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden tonight. I hope you learned something new. Don't be afraid to ask a question in the comments.